Hi, this is Dan here. I hope you're doing really well today. My last video was a cover of Hotel California by the Eagles, and it's just such a brilliantly simple bass line, but actually it's quite genius. There's some really excellent moments in it. So I'm going to take you through that today. There are really only two sections to the song. And when we start off with the intro, which is the same chords as the verse, you'll see what we're doing here. We've got a B minor, just playing roots at the moment, just uh, whole notes. B minus to F sharp seven. A to E. G to D. Now to see how it moves there, this is a good way to, to memorize it if you're on a gig and you're not reading like I am. This is Tom Play, by the way, this software I'm using at the moment, which is brilliant. I really, really enjoy it. But if I were on a gig, I would memorize this. And this is a good little tip. Look how the chords are moving. We've got B minor. And this is the key we're in, by the way. More of that later. We've got B minor to F sharp. So it goes a fifth away from the first chord. And then we go a tone down from our start, and we do the same movement, A to E. And then we do the same thing again. So that's the first thing I would recommend you do, is just to be aware of that movement of the root notes. It will make the bass line much easier. And then at the end, when we get to that D, we've got the little turnaround, where we go up a tone, E minor, and up another tone to F sharp, 7. And that that leads you back again to the beginning. And that really, that's the chord progression for the intro and the verse. And we're just playing whole notes, which are just four beats each time there. You can play, the, the I illustrated the notes here just to show you the movement, but you can play the notes anyway, you know. Open string A to E, a low G to then to the D. Let's go to the verse part. Now this is the thing. I also did a lesson a couple ago um, it was a Hotel California arpeggio exercise where you just took those chords and just went up arpeggios. I'll put a link below so you can have a look at that. But what's brilliant about this bass line is it doesn't actually use many notes from, from the chord tones. It just uses really a root. So let's go to the B, the start. So we're, I'm playing that at the seventh fret of the E string. You know, that iconic bass line. We've got a root, we've got a fifth, that's the F sharp in this case, and we've got an octave. And that really throughout the whole song, those are the note choices going on. There's no, there are no thirds in there, there's, there are no sevenths, there's nothing, that, you know, very, very meat and potato, very, very simple. It's all in the rhythm. I'm actually gonna start the B minor on the second fret, because then we can go to the F sharp, the low F sharp here. So we've got. There are a number of ways of playing this. So we've got the root on the first finger. You can either bar the fifth and the octave with your little finger. I prefer that way because there's less of a stretch and I can keep the wrist straight. Or you can bar it with your third finger or you can use third and fourth finger. Experiment, find the way that you like doing. And that really is the basic feel. Four sixteenth notes. And there's, there are a few ghost notes in there. So that's where you just lift your finger off the fretted note, still in contact with the string, and you get that percussive dead sound. Then we go to the F sharp. Occasionally there are ghost notes, occasionally, like in this bar, none. Now what I'm doing here, so I'm probably, I'm starting with my index, and because we've got sixteenths, I'm doing alternate plucking. So index, middle, index, middle. On the way back down, so from higher to lower pitched strings, I will sometimes use raking, that kind of thing. The key to that is lifting off the note with your fretting hand in order to keep them nice and short. Then we've got A. And you'll, you'll get used to the way this moves. So. You know, earlier on I showed you, that would be the movement if you started there, but if you start on the second fret, it goes like, we drop down to the same fret, then we move up three frets. You know, there are all kinds of movements that you'll, you'll get to learn. 
And this chord progression does this sort of movement. Where are we? Let's do E. See how the rhythm is almost always exactly the same. And as are the shapes, and that's that root five octave, very common bass shape. Then it's just a case of, of quite big shifts in cases. So like from the E to the G, I've got to go from the seventh fret all the way down to the third. That's just something as a bass player you have to master, hand shifts. Let's try that. See, we're just, to keep everything smooth, that's really the hardest thing I think about the song, is just doing that. Let's move on. Sometimes the bass line goes up to an F sharp minor, so it's probably better to start the B minor chord here on the seventh fret of the E string, and then the shift to the F sharp is actually much easier. Big one down to the A. Okay, there's a little run at the end of the verse going into the chorus. B, C sharp, D, F sharp. Which you can either play all on one string, and the B, C sharp and D all on one string, like this. Going to the F sharp, or you could play the D open. And then we've got, we've got like a reverse of the pattern, we're going octave, fifth, root this time. So the chord progression in the chorus, it just goes G to D, and then F sharp, seven, to B minor. Now, if I'm learning this for a gig, I'll often sort of work out what key we're in, so B minor. That's a must-know scale for bass players, okay? So you've got that scale, I'm starting on the second fret of the A string. And then I'll just work out where the roots are within that. Okay, so we've got G to the D, the relative major of B minor. There's the F sharp there to B. And I'll often like map out the notes like that and visualize it and literally look at them and I know that the that the chorus is like that note to that note, that note to that note. So again, it's using patterns to really help you. The second time round, it does almost the same thing to the D. And then we've got that turnaround at the end of the chorus and at the end of all the intro and verse bits. It's just that E minor to F sharp. And that just turns you around because that F7. That chord there's got a very strong pull back to that B minor. So we've always got that E minor to F sharp 7 thing going on at the end of the choruses and at the end of the intro and verse parts. Otherwise, we go to verse 2 and we have the same chord progression. And if you're learning this for a gig, I mean, if you're... My, my goal when I was reading the notes of the Tom Play um, software is it was just to read most of the notes and just add in my own thing here and there. And that was sort of good enough for me. If I was doing this for a gig, I would listen to the original. And I, I wouldn't, I would try to memorize it. If it's a gig where there's no music, which often is the case, you would just listen to the bass parts and just try to cop as many of the original parts and little touches as possible. And if I just look at this now, if I just sort of look at the chord symbols. <laughs> I can just play the same thing, just going from a B to an F sharp, then I need to go to an A, E. It doesn't really matter if I play it on the open E or the seventh fret. Now what about if you want to do little things like that, transitioning from one to another? That again comes down to knowing the key that you're in. So we're in B minor. And what I love about this bass line is there's not too much to it. It really is just that pattern. And you definitely should mostly do that. But if you do want to add in your little touches and connect up and maybe make things a little more complex in some places, then you can add notes from the keys. So this is, is your B natural minor. And there I went. 
Uh, we're on an E chord. Any of these notes, they work. And that probably there would be too much. But really, I just want to illustrate the point that if you know the key of a piece of music, you can then inject your own flair into it. You know what note choices are going to work. And ultimately, it's better, as you, better for you as a musician to know these things. A word about song structure. You know, we start off with the intro, then it goes into the verse and chorus. And, and really, when you're learning this, uh, you need to know what's, what's coming up next. And that's partly, that's really listening to the song and breaking it down in terms of, you know, what happens now. We've got, you know, so here, if I'm looking at my software here, we've got verse two, and then it goes chorus again. Then it's got verse three. Now, verse three is a breakdown verse. You know, you're just doing long notes, whole notes again. Now here, you might want to, you might want to add something in. So, you know, maybe like. I'm just walking up that B natural minor scale. This is exactly the kind of thing I might do on a gig, okay? If appropriate, you know. I, I might want to add my own thing in. So, you know, what am I doing here? Uh, just using those scale notes. Then I went to the A. That's something I use all the time. I know we've got my, we've got uh, root, five, slide up to the ninth, down to the octave again. So the octave is, in this case, seventh fret D string, and the ninth is two frets higher. I personally do that all the time. I know it works. We're on the E, E, F sharp, G, running into that. What about some harmonics? just hovering over those fifth frets. I know they they work. This is too much. I'm just illustrating a point that you you know, these are all options. You want to be creative. You want to be able to express yourself. And I, I'm teaching you Hotel California, but you, I hope you can see how these ideas can work in absolutely any song. You know, you've got to use your taste. You've got to use your judgment, but you can do that. Then we've got, you know, the, the same chord progression again into the solo, which once more is the same. Then, you know, one of the, uh, one of the only other parts is this. So you really got to get your alternate plucking going and just try, you know, just tapping your foot. These are 16th notes. So the, the crucial thing here is not to rush really. So nice and steady. Make sure that you 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 can keep track of everything. Four sixteenths is like index middle, index middle. You know, really know that. And then there's the next group, and then we got the eighths there. And then we're just doing that movement again. You know, that's the other way. I showed you this movement here. This is the other way. B, drop down to the same fret, then two frets down, A to E, and then two frets down really lovely easy to know pattern that but really it's a it's a brilliant bass line because the note choices are extremely simple root fifth octave the rhythm is you know they're going with a rhythm and just carrying on with that throughout the, it's a hook carrying on throughout the whole song with that two chord progressions to learn that's not too many and then it's just all about keeping everything feeling good, you know, nice and steady, not rushing, not slowing down. It's 74 beats per minute if you wanted to get a metronome and just practice some of these things, you know, just on your own with that. I'm really enjoying this Tom Play software. I've got a link below. They did send it to me for free, but they're, they're, I'm not paid or sponsored to do any of this. I just really, really like it. There's a 14 day free trial via a link below. I'm gonna do lots more covers like this because I believe that learning from the best bass players and learning from the greatest bass lines and dissecting actual songs, it's just so much fun to do. For me to actually to teach it, but also for you to, to learn in your own time instead of yes do learn scales do learn you know rhythms and all that stuff but learn bass lines that's going to really really help you i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you got something from it if you did please do subscribe to the channel any questions leave it in the comments below otherwise have a really really good day i'll see you next time